Good night, I'm Lisa Lord, and in our news, Barbados feels the impact of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 grounding. Bashman Soka heads to the beach, and that's just one of the changes. An itchy problem plaguing the cotton-picking season. And in sports, after the Frank Blackman zone, new schools take to the track in the BSAC Extra Maynard zone. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. All tourism officials across the island were holding their breath yesterday when the United States grounded Boeing's 737 MAX 8 aircraft, reversing an earlier decision in which American regulators said that the planes could keep flying after a deadly crash in Ethiopia. Shane Jones visited the Grantley Adams International Airport today to assess the local impact of that decision and he joins us live in studio. Good evening Shane. Hi good evening Lisa. Well here's what I found out when that decision came down yesterday. Now naturally it caused thousands of American Airlines flights cancellations worldwide and I can tell you that Barbados was not spared. Now, while at the airport today trying to get a word from AA officials on the specifics of the cancellations and just how many passengers were affected was not forthcoming. It would have been a nerve-wracking period for tourism officials as we are in the heart of the tour season. And as you know, Barbados relies heavily on visitors from the North American market. Now, Lisa, I can tell you that, however, we learned that what the American Airlines quickly switched out those specific aircraft for a variant of the model. Now, this allowed a slight hiccup to be quickly rectified, settling some nerves in the tourist industry. Now, Lisa, I was wondering about the safety of this variant and what airport officials made of it all. So I tracked down GAIA Deputy CEO Terry Lane and asked him just that, among other things. Okay, so Mr. Lynn, with the advent of the grounded um, flights, how has it affected the Grant Adams International Airport? As a result of the grounded flights, we had some American Airlines flights that were cancelled. We actually still have an aircraft on the ground right now, which will remain parked until the order is lifted and the plane is able to fly back to the United States. Um, with any cancellation, obviously you have customers that are displaced. Um, contingency plans were put in place by American Airlines and customers have started to leave Barbados as of, as of yesterday and will continue for the next couple of days or so. Okay, the variant that American Airlines is now offering customers, um, is the airport happy with that variant? And tell me about the level of displacement um, that, that the airport has seen. Yeah, we are happy. Um, it's very similar to the aircraft they were sending before. So that's a good thing. Um, the level of displacement, whereas I can't give you exact figures, we do know that um, customers had to be rerouted via the uh, American Charlotte flight and obviously would have made this place maybe a day or two. So I can't give you exact numbers, but I do know that there was some displacement, but um, thankfully it is being addressed very uh, speedily. Um, we don't know when um, this order will be lifted um, in the weeks, possibly even months coming up. Um, how is the airport ready to handle that situation? Well, because it is only one carrier that operates the flights and it's technically only one aircraft on the ground, we don't expect any major uh, displacements or disrupt disruption to the airport service. Um, as I said, we do have the one plane on the ground um, hopefully that will be able to fly out as soon as uh, it's given permission, but we don't expect any major disruptions to the air airport service. So that's pretty much it, Lisa. Yes, Barbados felt the impact. Yes, there was some displacement of passengers, but American Airlines has switched out their aircraft and things seem to be running smoothly again at the GAIA and they don't expect to suffer a major blow from the ongoing grounding of Boeing 737 MAX 8. Back to you, Lisa. Thank you so much, as always, Shane.
Well, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley says the 14 million U.S. dollar investment by a Dutch company into the island is a sign that foreign investor confidence continues to grow. She made the comment as Kuiman Holdings broke ground at Kendall Hill Christ Church for what will be a new drive through megastore with an emphasis on hardware items. The store is expected to be completed by the first quarter of next year, representing the Curacao-based company's first entry into the English-speaking Caribbean. We have been able, in the space of nine months, not to do everything that has to be done. But we've started the process such that people who are watching on see us passing the right road signs, see us on the right road, and recognize that if we continue on this destination, on this road, sorry, we shall reach our destination. The bottom line is that no one comes to invest the sum of money that is being invested here this afternoon unless they have confidence in the country, confidence in what is happening, confidence in the future of the country. And the Prime Minister adds that Kuiman's investment in Barbados also represents yet another signal that the island is ready to welcome foreign investment. That Barbados is fully open for business that Barbados may not yet have reached its destination of where we want to after a decade of decline. Far from. But we are on that right road. And that right road means attracting persons both domestically and from outside to invest because they believe that that investment will attract a return and that that return on investment will come because the countries political, economic, and social stability combined to create the platform for growth. And joining us live now to tell us more about Kuiman is our Ryan Broom. Good evening, Ryan. Good evening, Lisa. Good evening, viewers. And what does this investment mean for Barbados in well, simple terms? Well, Lisa, I mean, U.S. dollars, foreign currency. We're in a situation now where money is tight, as they say. We need as much, every dollar that we have, that we can get. And every U.S. dollar, every foreign, bit of foreign currency that, that the government does not have to supply on its own to provide new, new uh, infrastructure, that's a plus. And these things, construction projects of this magnitude result in a lot of ripple effects. You have the vendors who will benefit, the gas stations, transportation, food and, and, and beverage. All of these things will, will benefit from money that's not coming from the government's coffers, mm -hmm. but from U.S. money that's coming into the island. There's also the flip side. We have a lot of hardware stores here, a lot of small hardware stores. So obviously there's competition. Of course. And the CEO of the company, uh, Herbert Vanderwood, he touched on that. He said that, you know, there was some nervousness from some of the local hardware stores, but ultimately the truth is that competition breeds, I mean, it's best, it's it's best for, for consumers, it's best for you and me, we, we get the best prices. But he also said back in Curacao where they are, it's a, it's a drive-through hardware store. And he said that when they started, that there were other hardware stores who actually started drive-through hardware stores of their own because, and, and obviously it's a convenience, it's a major convenience. And so when they started that, then others started, and now it's, it's something that has caught on, and, and that's what competition does. It causes others around you to, to try to be better, whether it's on price, whether it's on quality. And one of the things that they said to is that a lot of the products that they're going to try to source, they're going to try to source them from Barbados or in the region as much as possible. Okay, so we're going to touch on jobs in the business report, but obviously it's a foreign company. Mm -hmm. Will the majority of their staff be Barbadian? That's what they're saying at this stage. Uh, for example, they said 95% will be Barbadian when the store is done in the first quarter of next year with a proviso that over time as that training and, and process is, is completed, 100% of the, of the uh, staff at the, at the Kuiman store will be Barbadian. And the other thing too is that this con construction phase will also see uh, scores of people being, being employed by the various subcontractors. Williams is one of them. So you have a lot of major local contractors who are going to be, that, who are be getting, gonna getting that spillover of uh, additional revenue coming in from this company. Okay, thank you so much, Ryan, telling us about the new Kuiman Megastore, which is just about to start construction in Christchurch. Well, significant changes have been made to one of the fastest growing events on the crop over calendar, the Yellow International Bashment Soka Monarch Competition. Now, the 2019 edition was launched at the Rain Lounge in Warrens, as we hear from Kishmar Sinjis. This year's Yellow International Bashment Soka Monarch is now a standalone event. The producers have added a beach party element, all at a new venue, Paris Cove. 
Bashment Soccer Ambassador Shane Dijeras Edwards joined the launch for the 2019 show. Tall artists, they are not limited to Bashment alone. Artists, you can submit your songs that have a fusion. And when we say a fusion, we mean a 50-50 fusion. So you could have 50% Bashment and 50% of any other genre of your choice. Also, something new, you can submit any song written and produced on or after January 1st, 2018. This year's winner will receive $60,000. The second and third place finishers will also receive prize money. The remaining finalists will get an appearance fee. Marketing manager at Yellow Barbados, Pamela Roach, says last year's show was a success. That show was won by Lyric. She says it provides a platform for artists and performers to hone their skills. We are pleased with the development of the competition over the years and the exposure that some of the artists would have enjoyed both locally and regionally. Yellow Barbados' involvement in the International Bashment Soccer Competition represents our continued resolve to support and promote our local and regional heritage and culture, knowing how important a role culture plays in uniting communities and businesses across the region. Registration opens on April 1st. The 2019 International Bashment Soccer Monarch will be staged on Saturday, July 6th. Kishmar Sengis, CBC News. Well, meantime, we're hearing that laws and restrictions imposed on entertainment activities that players in the sector say hinder and retard progress are being reviewed. These restrictions, according to Minister of Small Business, Entrepreneurship and Commerce Dwight Sutherland, have had a negative impact on the effective planning of major festivals like Cropover. As festivals and entertainment activities evolve to meet the ever-changing needs of its constituents, it was felt that the existing legislation and legislative framework within which festivals and entertainment activities were staged ought to be reviewed. And we are at that point, not only to review, but indeed to implement and change. So to address these concerns, our government will develop a national event strategy, the likes of which has never been seen in this country before. It is envisaged that events within the cultural and creative industry, such as this one, will play an integral part as a critical economic driver in the transformation of Barbados. And the strategy will prioritize three critical activities. We'll seek to develop a distinctive new event brand. Secondly, it will seek to develop standards and operational procedures and key performance indicators to measure events. And thirdly, it will seek to create a centralized entertainment license, what we call a one-stop shop for government permissions to execute an event. This new regime, therefore, will seek to repeal and replace the existing liquor license act and change the administrative responsibility from the judicial to the commercial activity within the ministry. Well, concerns about a rodent infestation caused the All Saints Primary School in St. Peter to be closed early today, and it will remain closed tomorrow to allow for an industrial cleaning. And this stems from teachers refusing to go back to the classroom this morning after reportedly seeing mice in the desk and droppings all over that school. Now, the teachers met with their union representative to discuss the situation. CBC understands it was subsequently determined by officials that classes would end early with the school bus leaving at 12.45 this afternoon. Regular classes are expected to resume come Monday. What's Trending is brought to you by Trident Insurance. We treat you like family. And we say hello now to Lisa Broom in our social media corner to tell us what is trending. Good evening to you, Lisa. Good evening, Lisa. Welcome to Watch Trending. Now, I'm sure by now many of you are familiar with the viral video. It's showing a young lady tied up with rope as two people try to get her up a flight of stairs into a building. Well, it was claimed that she was possessed. Now, this has prompted a lot of discussion about religion and exorcism among Barbadians. So let's see what our Facebook followers have to say. 
Glein Burt describes exorcism as fairy tale nonsense. He thinks instead people should concentrate on better mental health programs and counseling for those who need it. He says those who perform exorcisms don't have any special powers. And then there was De Amor Morrow, who believes exorcisms are nothing new and are performed all over the world. She says instead of focusing on them, most people, in her opinion, seem to have zeroed in on what appeared to be child abuse in the video. De Amor says as an Anglican, she is not necessarily concerned about what people choose to follow spiritually or religiously once it doesn't hurt anyone else. Meanwhile... Wayne P. Hoyt has gotten straight to his point with this answer. He says it's duppy talk. Now, another topic that has been generating buzz recently is skin bleaching. In fact, the Barbados Drug Service recently held a lecture on the practice to share their concerns. So we go back to Facebook now to get some input, starting with Kerwin Alkins, who says those with lighter skin get an easier time in life. However, Barbara Taylor is just asking why people want to change who they are. So stay tuned later on in Newsnight, and we'll have lots more on that reaction to skin bleaching from the man in the street. Now, if you've been following news out of the U.S., you may have heard that a number of wealthy people have been arrested in a huge college admission scandal. They allegedly pays, paid millions of dollars in bribes to get their children into top colleges. Now, they clearly took an expensive shortcut, but in this next clip, we're going to share another side, one about hard work actually paying off. It's about a teenager who was once homeless, and he's been accepted into, well, we'll just let him tell you himself. Take a look. You've been accepted to how many schools? 17 so far. Xavier University I got into. I got into NGCU. I got into Rowan University. You get the idea. It's a long list. And even more impressive when you consider the hardships Dylan and his family have had to endure over the last couple of years, including younger twin brothers with heart surgeries and a skyrocketing cost of living. Well, to say that that is quite an achievement is really an understatement. Now, you wouldn't think he would need any help getting anywhere quickly, but Jamaican Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt has come out with a line of electric scooters. The e-scooters have been billed as the future of sustainable transport. Bolt said they're a solution to increasing traffic and the pollution that he's seen in cities that he's traveled to. However, they're only available right now in the U.S., so it seems like the rest of us will have to stick to more traditional methods of transportation, like this guy did. He was caught on camera waiting patiently in traffic in Bridgetown, on foot, mind you, for the lights to change before continuing his journey. Not something that we see very often. And that's all the time we have for Watch Trending this evening. We're encouraging you to continue sending your comments to our WhatsApp numbers at 233-7388 or 233-7555, as well as our Facebook and Instagram pages. You can also send us send them rather to our email at nca at cbc.bb and remember to keep your comments clean. Well, the Ministry of Agriculture is encountering some challenges harvesting this year's cotton crop. Deputy Chief Agricultural Officer with Responsibility for Crops, Leslie Burton, says that efforts are underway to address them. Our Sean Farrell reports. This year's cotton harvest is being hampered by a perennial problem, cow itch, and it's making it difficult to get workers into the fields. When you ask persons to go and harvest in these fields, you're more or less committing a crime, you know, you can't send people in the college fields. So over the years, um, persons have been harvesting cotton in Barbados, and we have, in the 1980s, we were able to handpick over 800 um, acres of cotton in Barbados, and that was done by hand. Hand-picked cotton is still the preferred option. It's considered a better quality product and fetches a higher price. Every year, the ministry advertises for people to harvest the crop. Mr. Barrington insists finding workers is not the problem. I wouldn't say there is a shortage of labor to harvest cotton. What is occurring now, well, we hope to uh, move, remove that 
this year is the condition of the field. Mr. Barrington says they've been choosing fields near districts so people who want to harvest the cotton have access to facilities like bathrooms near their homes. Sean Farrell, CBC News. Last night we told you about the dangers of skin bleaching. Well, our photographer Chris Wood took to the streets to find out how Barbadians feel about bleaching. I think that it's an abomination. I think that black skin is a, is a treasure. It's um, a God-given gift. And I think that women who bleach their skin, it's something to do with insecurities based on slavery mindset because society makes us feel like women who have lighter skin or who are white are pretty, prettier than us black women who are just naturally black and naturally beautiful, but we're not celebrated the way light-skinned women are and the way white women are. So we bleach to feed those insecurities and I think it's time we wake up and realize our natural beauty. I have to have a problem, a skin problem, right? And you want to lighten a bit, no problem. But if your skin is perfect, like we are gone minute, I feel it should be the same sad way. It should have to change at all. So women should not be bleaching. To be honest, I feel nobody should be bleaching the skin. Accept who you were. If you black, you black. If you white, you white. Just accept who you were. That's how you were made. Embrace it. I believe that man and woman shall not be bleaching the skin because God made us perfect in his own way and we shall be remain as the way as he wants us to be. For me, I am bleaching. God made me this way and I live my natural beauty. I could force any sun the whole day and get black and black and black and then you feel bad on that. So, but when people bleach, you know, when the sun out, or they can't take the law sun and the oil covering up. And then the year they hear somebody go put with plastic and wrap up. You know, you go see the plastic, wrap up your skin and all that. That, that won't be healthy. A Barbados commitment to expanding its kindergarten and a preschool capacity has been lauded by a senior New York justice official. Visiting Justice of the Appellate Court of the State of New York, 2nd Department Sylvia Hines Radix, says this commitment is proof Barbados wants its children to be successful and to understand that everyone has a right to education. There is therefore no wonder that we, the so-called transplanted Bajans throughout the world, are ever boastful of the literacy and the high level of education of our nation. Well, Justice Hines Radix, who was born here in Barbados, was the featured speaker at the 26th Louis Lynch Memorial Lecture. Her theme was Celebrating Excellence in Education, the Louis Lynch Legacy. Justice Hines Radix, a past student of the Modern High School, reminisced on her interactions with the late educator Louis Lynch and the moral support he provided. She shared her experiences growing up and talked about how her parents supported her educational endeavors when she decided she wanted to be a lawyer at the age of eight. And she also reminded Barbadians that a humble upbringing does not prevent success. Well, Vincentian Prime Minister and Chairman of the Shareholder Governments of Liat, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says that public comments about the airline's latest crisis made by participants at last month's CARICOM meeting have not been at all helpful. Liat needs 5.4 million U.S. dollars to continue flying. Dr. Gonzalez notes that some people who attended the CARICOM gathering ignored his request not to address the matter publicly until the shareholders and other prospective governments had an opportunity to resolve some thorny issues. Dr. Gonzalez did not name any of the subjects but said that one or two others who were not at the conference decided to spread further fear and alarm based on only hearsay and misinformation. He says that one minister dusted off an insulting and tired declaration that his government is not going to be an ATM for Liat. Well, in Belize now, two men posing as police officers robbed a gas station. According to reports, the duo waltzed inside the station and demanded to speak to the manager. They forced their way into the manager's office and held him up at gunpoint. And we get more from Channel 5 Belize. Cameras inside this Puma gas station on the Philip Golson Highway captured these two men. At quick glance, they appear to be police officers, but a closer look reveals that they are quite the opposite. Wolves in sheep clothing, so to speak, alleged robbers dressed in what appears to be the standard police uniforms, donning sunglasses. These armed and disguised thieves casually walk out of the manager's office. One carries an electronic device, while the other carries a box. The uniform, the pants, resembles a police pants, but it is not one, it is not, it doesn't have all the specifications as a police pants. And they entered and they demanded to speak to the manager of the station. 
where they forged themselves inside to the office and thereafter they opened the safe and they took an undisclosed amount of cash and also the DVR equipment. They walk out of the gas station and make good their escape. It's a daring and bold crime, one which was executed so easily and quickly.